Hello from Victoria and me. Welcome to this evening's program. First tonight, the radical move to scrap all speed cameras across one of our biggest counties. Norfolk County Council is the first in this region to do so, saying they cost too much. But road safety campaigners are warning others not to follow suit, saying the cuts could cost lives. If the plan goes ahead, it means 22 fixed speed cameras will go, along with six mobile speed cameras. It also means the end of speed awareness courses, as Neil Bradford reports. It's fair to say they're not exactly popular with everyone, but speed cameras have become part of motoring life. Many believe they're more about raising revenue than saving lives, but councillors in Norfolk believe turning them off is one way to save them cash in a flash, a whole £1.6 million. A lot of people think that speed cameras have had their day because people find them easy to find once you go past them over and over again. So they get used to them, and the only people who really get caught are the ones who don't know they're there. Today, councillors voted in favour of withdrawing funding for both fixed and mobile speed cameras. Many motorists in Norwich appear to want them to stay. I think the cameras do in fact slow people down and remind one to watch the speed limit, so I think my reaction must be disappointment. Brilliant. I, I think it's a bit silly, to be quite honest with you, because that was brought out for a good reason. And if it's helping, then why spoil a good thing? I think they've cut down uh, accidents quite a lot. And there must have been a reason for putting them there in the first place. I'm sure that reason hasn't changed. Swindon in Wiltshire became the first local authority to axe speed cameras more than a year ago. Accident rates there have remained unchanged. Road safety campaigners fear more local authorities will now follow their lead. Sue Jackson from Northampton knows more than most about the consequences of speed. 20 years ago, she lost both her sons in separate accidents just five months apart. She's campaigned for road safety ever since. I would hope that they will think very clearly and I hope that they will look at all the evidence that's for these cameras and the effectiveness of these cameras before they make any decision. And if they do make a decision to take them away, that they put a proposal forward to put some effort into other kinds of deterrence, whatever that will be, better policing or whatever. Figures obtained by Anglia News suggest that since the introduction of safety cameras in our region, the number of deaths and serious injuries has more than halved. Suffolk has reported a 75% reduction in the number of fatal or serious injury collisions. Bedfordshire has seen a 39% reduction, while Northamptonshire and Norfolk have both seen a 47% decrease in the last 10 years. Motoring groups say road safety shouldn't be compromised. It's very worrying. Speed cameras have been part of road safety schemes over the past few years, and it has been shown that they've helped to cut accidents, uh, to cut deaths on the road, to cut injuries. So this is quite concerning for the road safety across the country, and especially Norfolk. The proposals to axe Norfolk speed cameras still have to be ratified by the council's cabinet. With big savings to be made, many say speed cameras are an easy target. But road safety campaigners say it could cost lives. Neil Bradford, Anglia News. Well, earlier I spoke to Duncan Vernon from the Royal Society for the Prevention of Accidents and began by asking him for his reaction to the news. Well, Rossborough is supportive of an evidence-based approach to road safety and the evidence on speed cameras is that time and time again in study after study they have demonstrated their worth and they have demonstrated that they prevent accidents. So, of course, we're concerned about the removal of speed cameras. What about the fact that, I mean, funding has been cut by central government by 40% this year. It's going to be cut completely next year. The council says it just doesn't have the money. Yes, and, and, and lots, of, lots of councils are in this very difficult position over what to cut. But, however, we do call, call upon councils to, to look at the, the benefit that speed cameras are having. They are having benefits, they are saving lives, they are enriching the lives of people and communities. And so to look again and to make sure that they're not just taking a wholesale removal of them and that they're looking at which ones can be kept. Obviously, uh, the final decision isn't going to be made until October. What is your message to the Cabinet before they make that decision? 
Well, the message is obviously to look at the effectiveness of the cameras in the local areas, to look at which ones you can keep, and to also monitor the removal of them to make sure that, you know, if, st if accidents do go up, that, you know, they, we can respond to it. And finally, we've got a long-term concern. In term if you get rid of all of the infrastructure that is there, then to reinvest in cameras would cost a lot of money. So to make sure that not, you're not just getting rid of them and that you are making sure that there is a way of keeping them in the future if more funding does become available. OK, Duncan Vernon from Rossville. We'll have to leave it there, but thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Well, you've heard the arguments for and against. What do you think? Would you be sad to see the cameras go or give a huge cheer? Do they help with road safety or are they a waste of money in these tight times? Send us your thoughts to Jonathan and Becky at ITV.com. That's Jonathan and Becky at ITV.com. And we'll try and read some of them out at the end of the programme. Please tell us where you're from as well. Yeah, look forward to hearing from you. Right, next tonight, it's been reported that a woman from Essex who died in an apparent chemical suicide pact had posted an internet plea to find a suicide partner. The bodies of 34-year-old Joanne Lee and 35-year-old Steve Lum were found in Braintree on Monday. It seems they'd only met hours before their bodies were found. Lorna Ramsey reports. A single bunch of flowers is the only reminder of what happened here. In a note, Joanne's sister questions why she had to leave. A glimpse of the pain being suffered by two families. It seems Joanne Lee from Braintree and Steve Lum from West Yorkshire were complete strangers but came together to end their lives at this industrial estate after meeting on an internet suicide forum. They should be banned, terrible things. You know, why anybody would want to try and talk anybody else into taking their own life, I'll never know. It's reported that on August the 27th, Joanne Lee posted a message for other people contemplating suicide. She returned to the site on September the 5th, asking for help with her plans, saying, I haven't the strength to do this. I'm not a cop, a cannibal or a murderer, just desperate. I want to do it ASAP. On September the 9th, Joanne said she had found someone to help. At 2.45pm on Sunday the 19th, Steve Lum wrote on an internet forum saying, I'm just saying goodbye. Take care, everyone. Steve Lum drove 200 miles from Sawbury Bridge in Yorkshire to Braintree. Their bodies were found at 8.20 on Monday morning by a warehouse worker at the Braintree Enterprise Centre. They were in a fume-filled Vauxhall Astra with notes left on the window warning not to open the doors because there were chemicals inside. The Sun newspaper reported today that Joanne had pleaded online for a suicide partner. I spoke to Joanne's mother and stepfather this morning and they didn't want to appear on camera. But they told me the way Joanne's death has been made so public is very distressing and they'd expected to grieve for her in private. Joanne lived here in the White Court area of Braintree. It's believed she suffered from a severe eating disorder. Neighbours have told me she was very thin and a very private person. You don't expect that kind of thing to hear it's happened. It's yeah, very, very sad. They must have been desperate to, uh, to end their lives for whatever reason, with the chemicals and all the other things that were involved. Organisations that provide emotional support say the internet can give people friendship, but it can also be harmful to those who are vulnerable. They're getting the advice they want. Um, I mean, you could go to any number of, of, of internet sites, our own Samaritans, all sorts of people, and you'll get some sort of advice. You can also go on other lines um, where you're getting what people want, um, whether that's the right advice or not, is a matter of opinion. I have to think it's ghastly. It seems Joanne and Steve's families had no idea they were using internet suicide forums. Now they have to try and deal with the consequences of their pact. Lorna Ramsey, Anglia News, Braintree. A lorry driver.